Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Uh, this will be your second part of the discussion in our module 1 in Empowerment Technologies. So during the last time or the last meeting, I was able to at least discuss to you what is uh, the first module is all about. So I talked about the ICT technologies and gave you some introduction on what is ICT. We also, or I was, able, I was also able to discuss some of the definitions and the different evolutions of ICT, some examples, and on this part here as well, I introduced to you the current situation of ICT in the Philippines. So we eventually realized that the ICT industry, especially in the Philippines, is actually uh, evolving. And hindi po tayo na uhuli as to compare to other countries. Well, in fact, we are actually on the upper half ng ratings natin in terms of the ICT development in the Philippines. Now, for today, let's go ahead and focus our topics with what we call the ICT Global Trends. Ano nga ba yung mga trending ICT technologies or rather technologies in the whole world and as well in the Philippines? So let's actually start our discussion by... Number one, introducing the following links here. And I have provided the YouTube links for you to watch in order for you to have a better understanding with the following trending technologies that we have here. Okay? Alright, so let's continue. The very first uh, ICT global trend in uh, that is actually being what you call this one, being used today is what we call the 5G networks. Uh, I know we have been hearing about the word 5G networks. Uh, this is actually one of the mobile internet na meron tayo. Well, in fact, we, uh, we have actually started from what we call the 1G, yung mga yan, the GPRS, 2G, 3G, and 4G LTE. So as of the moment, we are currently in the phase where we are transitioning from 4G LTE to 5G. Well, in fact, most of our SIM cards na nga nowadays are in 5G. Well, the main reason why it is trending, it's because of the integration of 5G networks to IoT devices or Internet of Things in the Hitawag natin. Because, you know, 5G networks offers lower latency and higher bandwidth alternatives, meaning it's faster Yan. And it will eventually make majority of the devices connected to one another. Kagaya ng artificial intelligences natin, edge computing, and automation. Um, here in the Philippines, again, kagaya ng sinabi ko, it, the, the 5G evolution already started. And even our cell phones or most of the SIM cards that we have right now are 5G enabled. Diba? So, kung naka 4G enabled pa rin yung mga SIM cards natin, okay pa rin naman yan. Because uh, it's still... It's still connected to the internet. However, it's better if yung mga SIM cards natin are 5G connected. Now, since we are talking about the 5G networks, and since I've mentioned about the Internet of Things, or IoT na tinatawag natin, this is also one of the global trends that is being considered. Uh, IoT, or the Internet of Things, from the word itself, the concept of this one is simple. It's the way on how you connect all the devices to the internet. Uh, dito ngayon papasok yung mga concept natin na tinatawag na smart homes, yan, smart cities, lahat na ng bagay smart. Okay? So, IoT are physical devices that are connected to each other and it's embedded with sensors. Say, for example, in a smart home, if your home is smartphone enabled na tinatawag natin, you can actually go ahead and control every single thing just simply either using your voice command or using your mobile phone. See, for example, the good example here is Alexa yan, and Siri. So, ay, ano natin? So, hey Siri, please turn on my computer. Yan. So, that's actually the Internet of Things. And with the help of 5G networks, mas magiging possible and mas magiging feasible po ang IoT. Well, as, as I have mentioned from the last meeting, uh, from the DICT report, our internet connection is, of course, becoming faster. And with that being said, the, the networks or the 5G networks and Internet of Things will actually be more possible here in this country. 
Diba? So, number three here, another global trend is what we call the edge computing. When we say edge computing, uh, the concept of edge computing is very simple. It's bringing computing as close to the source of data as possible in order to reduce latency and bandwidth use. One example of edge computing here is what we call the cloud cloud computing where in which we can now download or access all of the files through the cloud okay so it's it's a very simple concept pero it needs to have a better and faster internet connection for us to experience uh, edge computing processing well in fact uh it's al it, it already started diba yung mga google cloud natin google drive microsoft onedrive uh, and so on. Even in, in terms of gaming, we have now the cloud gaming that we Like for example, the Xbox cloud gaming in which you can now uh, bring your Xbox games uh, through the cloud. Meaning, even if you are using your own cell phone, you can now play them anywhere, anytime. Diba? So that's Xbox graphics. Diba? And PlayStation also nag rin yan. Uh, even Google Stadia, na tiyatawag natin. Imagine playing, say for example, the latest game, Marvel's Guardian of the Galaxy. And you can now play them without even owning an Xbox Series X or even a Nintendo Switch or even a PlayStation 5. Basta meron kang cloud service, na tiyatawag natin. You can already experience those kind of game. That alone is an example of edge computing processing. So, itong tatlong to magkakapatid yan, yung 5G networks, Internet of Things, and edge computing processing. Now, let's move on with the next trend of the ICT technologies that we have here. Number four is what we call the cryptocurrencies and mobile wallets. We have been hearing cryptocurrencies a lot lately. Well, in fact, we all know that cryptocurrency is a digital payment system. It's, it's, it doesn't really rely, rely on banks. No one owns this one, okay? Um, particularly, cryptocurrency, it's a peer-to-peer -peer system that can enable anyone, anywhere to send and receive payments. Kaya nga pumapasok dyan yung concept natin ng mobile wallets na tinatawag natin. And this will be the trend, or this is actually becoming a trend, especially in the Philippines. Uh, Nag-start to during nung pandemic, where actually... Uh, nung pandemic, di ba, where majority of us are using the mobile wallets and cryptocurrencies to have some transaction online. Is cryptocurrency bad? Yan. Um, it actually depends. It it actually depends on the type of cryptocurrency itself. Yeah, yung yung Bitcoin natin, di ba? Yung Bitcoin. I I think you also heard the the scandal ng ng Bitcoin, Ethereum, and even the small love potions ng Axie Infinity. Well, the, the short answer if cryptocurrency is bad is it depends on how the user secure their digital wallets and their digital, you know, uh, of course, their digital wallets na rin. Diba? So, yeah, we will talk about NFTs as well. Yeah, because according here to the comment, NFTs harms artists in a way. Well, I kind of agree, diva. Right? And I think, I think one of you here or some of you here are engaged heavily in digital arts, diva. Right? Let's talk about that later on. Pero yeah, cryptocurrency is bad. Pero dependian on how you secure your wallet. Well, we don't really know who owns cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin. We don't really know how bitcoin you know started pero basically it depends on how you you secure your online wallet na tinatawag natin tinatawag natin yan uh yeah nft sucks <laughs> according to yan mandy dilan according dito let let's talk about that in in a way later on Kasi magkakadugtong to eh. The number four talks about cryptocurrencies and mobile wallets. Yeah, Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, yan, mga, kung ano-ano pang mga cryptocurrencies dyan. Napakadami, di ba? Uh, you can also, by the way, there are a lot of people out there na nag invest na rin sa cryptocurrencies. Because whether we like it or not, cryptocurrencies is actually the next phase or the next evolution of money. Kasi we, kaya nga may tinatawag tayo na decentralized. Okay? Decentralized tokens. In which, eventually, 
all of our money will or we will have a single currency all around the world and sadly nag-uumpisa na nga di ba so this is actually the evolution and cryptocurrencies are slowly revolutionizing the way on how we see the mobile markets or the stock market itself di ba so that's number four. Now, since we are talking about cryptocurrency, blockchain technology is also very important and very, uh, very important to know. It's an immutable ledger that facilitates the process of recording transaction and tracking assets in the best in the business network. Well, blockchain technology is also simple to understand. We have here a block, diba? Right? And everything is actually connected. Say, for example, in a business, business runs on information. And the faster it's received and more accurate it is, the better. Blockchain is ideal for delivering that information because it provides immediate, shared, and completely transpar transparent information stored on an immutable ledger that can be accessed only by permission network members. So, uh, once one of the blockchain uh, industry here, ito, kapag ka yung isa dito nagkaroon ng problema, the, the, the bad thing about this one, eventually everyone will, of course, have the same impact. Just like, for example, the the impact of small love potions. Yan, small love potions sa Axie Infinity natin. Diba? Uh, we are already aware that the SLP nowadays are becoming more, I mean, much cheaper. Diba? So, uh, let's, let's double check. Ilan na nga ba ang SLP ngayon? Naabutan ko to nung nag-uumpisa ang, ang Axie Infinity, like around 18 pesos. So, as of the moment, medyo less than piso. Maybe you are wondering, bakit nga mapababa ng pababa ang, ang SLP values natin? Or, tinatawag natin na yan, small love potions. Na number one, yeah, according to Tamayo here, uh, due to publicity, that's number one actually, uh, that's in layman's term, pero let's try to understand na meron din yung concept ng tinatawag natin na basic public, I mean, supply and demand. The, 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 what do you call this one? Uh, yung Axie Infinity na, na yan kasi, even way back 2018, nung time na, nung time na meron siya, di ba ang mga Pilipino hindi naman niya, hindi naman talaga tayo totally aware during that time sa Axie Infinity na yan. Naging aware lang tayo when uh, it's actually because of what we call the, the the press, the public. We were informed that, hey, you can now earn games using, or you can now earn money by just simply playing games. And they introduced us dun sa tinatawag natin na Axie Infinity or iba pang uh, NFT games na meron tayo. ba? Such as, ano yung isa, yung nagpa-farm, yung mga ganyan. Uh, I don't know if if you know that, pero I don't really invest kasi sa 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 mga NFT. Eh, to be honest, I even me as your teacher and as an IT professional, I don't I didn't really invest in in this kind of technologies. Well, the main reason kung bakit bumababa ang 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 SLP natin, it's because of the demand. Okay, mas dumadami kasi ang demand. Mas dumadami, di ba? Mas madami kasing scholars. Ibig sabihin, the demand for SLP mining is becoming higher comparing dun sa mismong uh, nag invest na lang. And because of that kind of demand, mas hindi kinakaya ng blockchain na isupply pa yung demand niya. Kaya mas lalong bumababa ang value ni SLP. And... Sad to say po, dun sa mga nag invest po ng, ng, ng small love potions or sa Axie Infinity or let's say, I'm sorry to say, pero nadala sa hype ng NFTs. Uh, I'm really sorry to say, but then NFTs in the Philippines, medyo hype lang eh. Naging, yun nga, we have this term in which we call bandwagon, di ba? Na nadala tayo sa hype without even trying to analyze the stock. Yeah, not stocks. Technically, we still need to analyze the stocks, di ba? Pero yun nga, naka talaga ang number ng scholars sa pagbaba ng SLP values. So, if you really want to invest, uh, if you really want to invest in cryptocurrencies or let's say NFTs, sa tinatawag natin, it's still better if you try to understand or try to look for some NFT games in which, di ba? In which, yung nag-uumpisa pa lang, yung habang wala pa. Diba? Uh, Ubisoft recently got ano to? 
a bad image because of implementing NFTs inside their kids. Ah, oh, yeah, that Ubisoft company. I, I don't know, but I'm starting to hate them. Diba? Because because of that alone. Well, let's, since we are talking about NFTs for the sake of other people who are here, ano nga ba yung NFT na yan? NFT tayo na NFT. Well, to easily understand NFT or the non-fungible tokens, basically, you have here a digital token. And that particular digital token is linked to the blockchain and the digital database underpinning cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin. Uh, say, for example, you have a work of art. Diba? You have a work of art. So you have a digital art here. You can now sell that particular art to other people, and basically you are giving the right to that kind to, to that person. Pero you paid something in order for you to 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 buy the right of that, diba? Yeah, I I also agree that the fastest way to kill your own game is to join the NFT community. Tatao yan, tatao yan. Kasi sabi nila ang NFT daw is uh yun nga nagbuboom siya. Diba? Nag, nagbuboom nga ang NFT. Well, in fact, it really hurts digital artists. It's because of that, the concept of NFT. Napaka, even the, the monkey, diba? Yung, ewan ko kung narinig nyo yung NFT monkey na, na, eto, yung issue na nagkaroon ng problema dito, diba? Yung board ape NFT na yan. Diba? Yung mga ganyan, na nagkaroon ng problema. Uh, yeah, they also use the Queen's Art. <laughs> Taba, yung mga Queen's Art na yan. And even yung, yung, ang tawag dito, uh, the, the, the Asian boy who, <laughs> who sold his selfie sa NFT marketplace ba yun, yung tinatawag natin. Uh, at toto, OpenSea.io is actually a place where you can sell I don't know. This is somehow somehow interesting at first, but if you try to analyze, this is becoming funny for me and unfair to digital artists who really, you know, into the world of, of course, digital arts and animation. Me alone is a graduate of, or has a major of digital arts and animation during my college days. Kaya naiintindihan ko yung feeling na nakakasira ang NFT sa market ngayon ng digital arts. Uh, I I even I even post my arts before in DeviantArt, you know, pero since meron na to eh, meron na NFT, na, na-disrupt niya yung eto. Well, uh, in terms of NF- NFT, according according to to my friend, by the way ha, who really engaged me to to do this, okay, according to him, in order for us to earn money through selling our digital artworks is to engage ourselves in the NSFW w artwork type not safe for work types na ano daw mas mas malaki daw yung kinikita na pera na yan, na pera niya by just simply drawing ponies my little ponies who are you know you know what i mean guys so it's NSFW yeah napakadami daw po ang market ng NSFW and yeah the brony and yeah, no thanks as well. <laughs> hindi ko rin kaya, to be honest. Ha? Hindi ko rin, hindi ko rin ma- matake. Pero, let's, of course, let's face the reality. I don't know why, and there are still a lot of people who still, you know, I don't know, napaka-thirsty na sa part na yan, yung mga brownie na yan. And they, they appreciate those kinds of artworks. And that's a fact. They need bunk. <laughs> that'll make sen- that'll make me insane. Question my sanity. Yeah, I also like I try to take a look at those, you know, those artworks related to my little ponies, and I was like, oh my goodness, it it's happening. By the way, it's really happening, and it's a weird it's a weird thing to to have like I don't know I don't really know I don't I cannot explain. Well, I, you probably heard about the Lara Croft, I mean the the Tifa Tifa Zoom meeting scandal lately, diba? I don't know, pero it it's funny. <laughs> it it's 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 funny though comparing to the little ponies, it's still better, diba? Yung yung Zoom issue na yan na na, na project daw during the meeting, during the meeting si Tifa ng Final Fantasy 7. And that's a scandal. Nagkaroon ng scandal regarding that. Kasi na, na, ano siya, na-share yung screen niya. Unfortunately. So, yeah. 
NFTs, they really look ugly. And take a look at this example here, this kind of artwork. They they even sell their their I don't know, this is way sluggish. Comparing to those arts inside Deviant Art or even uh Art Station, for example. Diba? I don't know if you know Art Station, pero I know most of you knows this. Know this. Art Station is still better. And I, I even follow amazing artists dito sa art station. I even look for some inspiration dito. Like, look at them. And they don't even... These are legitimate artists. And comparing to those NFT arts that are being sold like around uh, 0.00 something Bitcoin, which is a very big amount of money. Yeah. Ayo may, may... Doon pala nakuha ni Mandy yung kanyang job sa art station. So, diba? And it's, I don't know, I still appreciate this one. This this community pa rin. Comparing here, like, I don't know. Well, let's, we will talk about that later on. Kung bakit nga pa nagiging hype, lalo ang NFTs dito sa bansa natin. Especially here in the Philippines, eh. We cannot really, it's inevitable, sabi nga nila, when someone or when one Filipino is is being you know hyped sa isang bagay or technology sunod-sunod na yan eh sunod-sunod na yan sa sa Pilipinas ando pa rin yung ugali natin na bandwagon ayan tawag natin we we try to invest to something without even trying to realize the effects dito sa part na to well luckily uh, i listen to my gut na hindi ako nag-invest sa cryptocurrency for now i'm not saying na hindi talaga ako totally magi-invest sa crypto Pero I'm just trying to understand muna and trying to take a look at the stocks and cryptocurrencies. Yes, indeed, cryptocurrencies are giving us uh, a future pa rin. And I, 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 still, I still think may, may positive future pa rin ng cryptocurrencies na yan. It's just that hindi pa lang siya totally maayos for now. Okay? So, this three, it's very important as, as an IT graduate or as an ICT personnel na rin later on. And of course, me as an IT professional, lagi kong binabantayan tong tatlong to, tong cryptocurrencies, blockchain, and non-fungible tokens. Yeah. So, let's move on to another global trend here, which is the RPA, or the Robotic Process Automation. This is also related to the number eight, which is the artificial intelligences, the machine learning, deep learning. Currently, this is also one of, one. this is actually considered as one of the advanced tech na meron tayo. RPA. Uh, yung robotic process automation na yan, from the word itself, for robots, robotics, di ba? They're actually trying to implement uh, machine learnings and artificial intelligences to majority of the jobs right now. Say, for example, yung ano natin, di ba? Nag-start na nga eh. Uh, not really literal robot, pero kiosk na tinatawag natin. Say, for example, in McDonald's, di ba? So, in which they have implemented a kiosk, kiosk system kung saan tayo na yung magtitake ng order. And because of that, nagkaroon na ng, ng pagbawas ng employees. And eventually, uh, as the years pass by, of course, it will happen sa mga ibang jobs na rin and sectors. Say, for example, in accounting, uh, the robotic process automation is really giving a headache sa accounting industry. Because of the fact that, you know, the accounting people can be taken over by the robots. So, yung process na ginagawa nila, kayang-kaya na rin tong magawa ng mga RPA natin. Diba? So, RPA, and if you will try to read the definition of this one, due to lockdowns, economic and financial implication, companies are looking for ways to maintain or increase efficiency while reducing costs. Well, uh, technically speaking, that's actually correct because if you have implemented a robot instead of hiring a manpower, it's still better kasi nga sa cost, mas mahal ang manpower comparing sa pag-develop or pag-program ng isang system. That's reality. Kaya us, uh, an IT student na rin or IT professionals or IT people, di ba? Nandito tayo sa track in which let me say this, hindi tayo mawawala ng work in the future. This is actually true. And as an IT graduate, or computer science in particular, I'm a graduate of ComSci kasi, uh, hindi po tayo nawawala ng trabaho. Hindi po kami nawawala ng trabaho because uh, 
by the fact that I am actually in the field of game development, digital arts and animation and programming and of course system developer. Never ka talaga mawawalan ng trabaho, di ba? So, if you have if you possess those kinds of skills as an IT or computer science graduate, of course, nandoon ka sa sa part ng I mean, do, nandoon ka sa may part na hindi ka talaga mababakante. And sad to say sa other sa other industries out there, nanganganib talaga sila. Well, the concept of artificial intelligence will really, uh, you know, made an, will really make an impact sa mga next or the future technologies. Yang machine learning pa nga lang na yan eh, in which the machines will now learn from what you are doing or from what he is doing. Diba? The deep learning as well, ayan, in which will try to emulate the human neural networks, eliminating the need for pre-processed data. In fact, uh, even Sophia ng Saudi Arabia, di ba? Nakaya niya na mag-mimic ng, ng human emotions. And as the day passed by, we are actually seeing Sophia's evolution to the point na she can already uh, tell jokes and be offended with the interviewer's questions. In which, well, basically, it's happening, sabi nga natin na to talagang palapit na ng palapit ang cyberpunk. And yeah, it it detects red cups to piss. Yeah, actually. Diba? So, I don't know. Uh, honestly, I'm somewhat excited because of the fact na I'm secured. Kasi even, even me, myself, I am... Actually, hindi ko nga alam kung ano talaga yung focus ko. Kasi uh, I love game development, to be honest. Like, amongst all, of, amongst all other skills na meron ako, the, the programming is actually one of my favorite skill na meron ako because I love coding most of the time. Pero, once you think of it, na ang coding, pwede mo siyang ma-apply sa artificial intelligence and deep learning, mas maganda po ang magiging kilalabasan. Kaya, kayo, as a student, uh, do not be do not be stressed out with your codes kasi ganyan talaga. Mangyaya, especially kapag ka nagkaroon na kayo ng work outside or nakagraduate kayo ng IT or computer science. If you're also into animation and digital arts, andyan din, di ba? Napakalaki din ng marketplace ng digital arts. <laughs> Peace bot. <laughs> the dude just keeps swearing. Yeah. So, that's number 7 and number 8. Another... Uh, another technology here is quantum computing. This is also correlated to the artificial intelligences. Well, basically, quantum computing hindi pa nangyayari to sa atin. Pero, the, the purpose of quantum computing is to simply solve highly complex computations that, so far, humans or this, those supercomputers cannot even solve. And this is actually related to the space race na tinatawag natin, in which they are planning to develop a technology in which can now perform or can now travel or can now unveil the secrets of the universe. Diba? Time machine, for example. In order for them to achieve time machine, they, diba? they, they need to build a very powerful computer in order for them to at least do that. Kaya quantum computing, yung mga quantum computers na meron tayo. And uh, if quantum computing entered the market of, in, in the Philippines, mas lalo pong magiging mas lalo pong mag improve ang, ang industry ng ICT sa Pilipinas. So, so that's quantum computing. And number 10, another immersive, I mean, another ICT trend here is what we call the immersive technology. Ito, this is actually one of my favorite technologies that are trending. Kasi nangyayari na. Immersive technologies like augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality na tinatawag natin. Diba? So, it create distinct experiences by merging the physical world with the digital or simulated reality. Now, uh, since Facebook introduced the meta, na tinatawag natin, or metaverse, this is actually the part in which he is trying to, uh, based from the based from our next discussion here dito, sa part na to, sa hype cycle of emerging technology, uh, the Facebook team, or the meta, metaverse team, na tinatawag natin, uh, they saw the future of social media. Diba? As of the moment, we are in the phase where mobile technologies are the mainstream. 
nandito na rin tayo sa phase na nag-evolve ang mainstream from mobile to immersive immersive tech na pinatawag natin. Yeah, yan yung una kong naisip eh, yung, yung SAW na yan, yung Sword Art Online, di ba? in which you will just simply wear your headset, tapos, boom, nandun ka na sa loob ng Metaverse. And, nung narinig ko ang Metaverse, to be honest, isa ako sa mga tao na, na nag-invest agad sa Oculus. Ito ha, the, the main reason why I invested in, in, in Oculus or the Metaverse is actually because of the next generation of gaming industry in the game in in game development the next evolution of gaming will now uh include or at least yeah include the experience of having emerged okay inside or immersed inside the technology itself in inside the gaming environment i just played played beat saber and ready player one yeah <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg gonna play God. <laughs> Nakakatawa ito mga ito. Uh -oh. And just for you guys to know, uh, in the gaming industry, di ba, I, I think you heard the announcement of PSVR 2. And announcement, or the upcoming announcement of Oculus Quest 3. I, I, I own Oculus Quest 2 as of the moment, and it's by far, this is the cheapest uh, experience para sa metaverse, di ba? So, yan na nga, nag start na sila na magkaroon ng mga ganito. And aside from gaming, of course, immersive technology will now be used or can now be used to conduct meetings or our future classes, synchronous classes, which <laughs> will be like this. Ah, Switch Pro. Baka, baka next year ang Switch Pro pag release ang sequel ng Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Sabi nila, that's a rumor. Diba? Magklase tayo sa VR chat. That's one of my plan kung lahat tayo merong ano eh, merong virtual reality. Diba? Ang, ang saya sana. <laughs> ang saya sana. Well, you know, just for experience. Uh, I am really hoping that majority of us later on naka-VR na. Hindi ako nagtataka. Hindi ako, hindi ako magugulat. Kasi, alam nyo kung bakit? Uh, alam nyo kung bakit? This is also important for us to know or understand what we call the hype cycle of emerging technologies. I'm I'm thinking of different of a different VR experience. No, <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but no, <laughs> please no. Bad. <laughs> uh, well, if you own a VR headset, I think you will always try to experience that. Diba? Uh, I tried that, but then it's it's not natural. It's it's weird. It's like watching a little pony. You know, I don't know. Again, uh, <clears throat> ito, dito tayo. Na-distract ako sa inyo dun sa ano nyo. <laughs> Let's talk about the hype cycle of emerging technologies. Uh, this is very important because this is actually the one or the way on how you uh, watch a technology grows and will eventually enter the market. And dito rin natin marirealize kung ang technology is becoming or becoming more effective. Okay? Hype cycle of emerging technologies. It's a pattern. It's a pattern yan, that arises with each new technology or other innovation. Now, let's take a look at this example here. This is only a basic hype cycle lang. Ito. The hype cycle of emerging technologies have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different phases. Number one is what we call the innovation trigger or the technology trigger. This is the phase where an emerging or a technology suddenly emerged. Okay? Dito nag-uumpisa yung, uy, may balita tayo sa ganito na marirelease pala siya na eto pala yung technology na yun. So, yun yun, kumbaga public demand, public demonstration, product launch. Say for example, the birth of cell phones, di ba? It, it started like way back 1980s pero umuso ang cell phones way back 19, I mean, 2000 na. Diba? So, this is the phase where people are starting to invest. I mean, not really invest, pero have an interest sa technology na yun. And eventually, that particular technology will now enter the new phase, which is the peak of inflated expectation. Pag tinawag natin kasing peak of inflated expectation, this is actually the part where people will now be 
will now start investing to that particular technology. Nasa peak na nga siya eh. Kumbaga, this is the trend. This is the buzz. Yan. So, nagbibuild na siya ng expectation. Nagiging trending na. This is also the part where us consumers are trying to invest and trying to to experience that kind of technology at the peak. Okay? And eventually, those kinds of technologies will either remain at the peak or bubulusok yun pababa. Yun yung pinaka-sad part ng technology. Pagka nasa peak siya, there is a possibility na pumunta siya sa tinatawag natin na throw of disillusionment. This is the part where the consumers eventually realize that that technology is not even useful. Walang kwenta. Di ba? And it doesn't have that kind of potential value. And Unfortunately, not all technologies are experiencing that kind of, you know, that kind of part in which pupunta sila dito sa tinatawag natin na slope of enlightenment. Some technologies will eventually evolve and will enter the slope of enlightenment. Some technologies will eventually become an obsolete technology after the peak of that kind of technology na rin. Pag sinabi kasi natin slope of enlightenment, this is the part where nalagpasan na yung disillusionment, the Consumers are slowly realizing that that technology is becoming more useful and they are seeing the potential of that specific technology. Nag nagiging ano na eh, nagiging, nagiging ano na siya, pwede na siyang magamit, kumbaga. Diba? Nai-enlighten na yung mga tao sa paggamit ng technology na yan. And up to the point na pumapasok siya lalo sa tinatawag natin na plateau of productivity. The plateau of productivity, this is the phase where the technology is widely being accepted by the society already. Uh, ibig sabihin, it's a norm, nagiging, naging sikat na siya, naging uso na siya. Okay? Now, let's take a look at this example here, and I want everyone to understand and analyze what's happening in the hype cycle of emerging technologies from the year 2012 and the year 2021. As of last year, ano nga ba yung mga technologies na bago? na paparating pa lang. Quantum machine learning is one. Generative AI or artificial intelligences. Digital humans or the active metadata. Nag-i-emerge na, na siya. Diba? Paunti-unti. Decentralized finance. Take note, binanggit ko ang decentralized finance kanina. Diba? Uh, ibig sabihin na ito, yun, yung, yung cryptocurrencies natin magiging normalized na siya. And if you notice, the color coding here also signify something. Yung, yung kulay na to, this simply means that in 5 to 10 years, okay, in 5 to 10 years, something might happen or it will might it will still stay on the innovation trigger. Parang ganyan siya. Diba? So, ito yung mga technology na lumabas noong 2021. Pero let's take a look at the peak of the fl inflated in, in, in expectation. This study was actually conducted not in the Philippines, but rather all around the world. And if you will try to check at the peak of infl infected or peak of inflated expectation, NFT is at the peak currently. Diba? NFT, na naman tayo sa NFT na yan, non-fungible token. Kasi nga, this is the year where people are starting to invest with non-fungible tokens. Nakikita nila na ang non-fungible tokens are worth investing for now. But then, kagaya nga na sinabi ko, with inflated expectation, the, in expect the expectation, nakakatakot yan. Kasi pwede yung bumaba dito sa true of the solution, man. And that's the reason why NFTs might and will hurt the digital arts industry. Take note. Uh, ilang taon nang nakalagay dito? Uh, the sky blue. The sky blue simply means 2 to 5 years. Diba? So, in 2 to 5 years, NFT will, let's let's be positive na maging mapunta siya agad dito sa slope of enlightenment or product of productivity or, sad to say, talagang pupunta yun sa disillusionment. We'll never know for now. Diba? That's NFT. Aside from NFT, meron na rin tayong mga AI, aug augmented software engineering, mga yan. Artificial intelligence is talaga eh. Data fabric and decentralized identity. Ang decentralized identity, cryptocurrency and blockchain din yan. Pero, eto. Let's take a look and let's go back to some example here at the year 2012. Year 2012 is also the year where 3D printing is at the peak. 3D printing ha? 
Diba? Nasa peak na yan. 2012. Pero if we will try to analyze the graph here, or the cycle, 2012, nasa peak. 2013, nasa peak pa rin ang 3D printing. 2014, okay. Take note. This is a good example. 2012, nasa peak. Nag-invest ang mga tao. And 2014, nasa slope of enlightenment na siya. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? 3D printing is accepted by the society. 2015, nasa slope of enlightenment na rin siya. Ibig sabihin, they are realizing the importance of 3D printing in the industry. And according here, 2 to 5 years after 2015, in which 2016, hindi na nakita si 3D printing sa graph, di ba? That simply means 3D printing is a norm already. Even hospitals, mga ganyan, are using 3D printing uh, to at least produce some products. Manufacturers are using 3D printing to produce some particular products. Diba? So, yun yung, yun yung power na hype cycle na to eh. Tingnan pa natin. Tingin pa tayo dito ng ibang technology na na-accept. 2020, 2012, uh, yan. speech recognition is one example. Nung 2012, slope of enlightenment. Diba? Ang speech recognition, kung titignan natin ngayon, naging normal na siya. We are, I don't know if you guys are using the functionality of Siri and Alexa or the Google mismo. Ako, I, 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 personally, use, I personally use Siri on my iPhone kasi minsan tamad akong mag-type. So, for example, I, I just want to know the weather. Yung mga ganyan. We don't have one except Google. And so, speech recognition you know, is accepted by the society already. And another example here na, gusto, na magandang using fingerprint for unlocking. Uh, for the fingerprint or unlocking, meron silang term dito na tinatawag nating gesture control. Yan, gesture control. Nagpa-fall under yan sa gesture, con gesture control eh. And kung titignan natin ng gesture control, pumasok din yan sa throw of disillusionment, meaning they think that that product is useless na eventually, pumunta siya sa slope of enlightenment. Ayan. Gesture control. Tapos, pataas na siya ng pataas sa, sa graph natin until such time na nawala na ang gesture control sa hype cycle of emerging technologies. Meaning, naging accepted na siya. Naging norm na siya. And take note, let's go back to the topic of metaverse or the immersive technologies. If we will try to understand the life cycle of the metaverse, ang, ang virtual reality kasi nag-start talaga yan 19, around 90s. Kung nakita nyo yung sensorama na tinatawag natin, uh, search na lang yun. Yung papasok nyo yung ulo nyo dun sa technology na yun, maaamoy nyo daw yung, yung, yung kapaligiran and makikita mo yung, yung environment virtually. That's actually the phase where they have discovered the technology the virtual reality. Yeah, isa rin yan, yung virtual boy na yan. Yung kulay red na Mario, Mario Tennis. ba? Diba? Yan, brain implants. Pag-usapan din natin yan. Uh, tingnan natin dito ang virtual reality. Ang virtual reality kasi, yeah, pumasok talaga yun sa technology trigger. And hindi ko na kasi mahanap yung part na narealize nilang nasa peak siya. Pero, nag-start talagang pumunta. Or, I mean, pumasok din sa throw of disillusionment ang virtual reality. They realize that VR or immersive technologies, you know, augmented reality, virtual reality, bumagsak ang value niyan. So, meaning they even realized that virtual reality is a nonsense technology, 2014, di ba? Pero, little by little, 2015, virtual reality started entering the phase of slope of enlightenment, in which according here, 5 to 10 years, virtual reality will can be accepted or can be accepted by the society itself. And strongly, ang VR nung 2016 and 2017, nasa slope of enlightenment na siya. Un until to the point na 2018, take note, 2018, wala na siya sa graph. That simply means, at the year 2017, nag-stabilize ang market ng acceptance ng VR. So according here to the graph, 2 to 5 years after 2017, virtual reality will eventually become a norm and will enter the plateau of productivity. VR. And that simply 
concludes why Metaverse was introduced by our boy Mark Zuckerberg last year, 2021. Because they predicted, and yeah, they are playing the gods here, they actually predicted that the next phase of evolution of technology is virtual reality. That's the next ICT na aabangan talaga ng mga tao. Mag- nag-uumpisa na sila actually. ba? Diba? So, yun yun. Yun yun. Napaka, napaka strong po ng, ng hype cycle of emerging technology. So, kung titignan natin ang microchipping, mag, uh, I don't know the term of microchipping, pero may nabasa ako ditong implants eh. May nabasa akong implant-implant dito. Ito, tong mga artificial tissue na to. Yung mga ganyan. Ito, exoskeleton. Then, yung quantum computing 5G, nandito rin, no? Uh, digital twin, ayan. Digital twin of the person. Magkakaroon din tayo. Kasi 2030 pa ang brain implants, eh. So, mara, medyo matagal-tagal pa naman. Ayun, human augmentation. Ito, ito, ito. Human augmentation, if you can see, 2017, pero naka-triangle siya. More than 10 years. So, Nasa technology trigger na po. Innovation trigger na ang brain implants. Are you guys ready? Me? I'm ready sa microchipping. If that's the most possible way kung para, para maging advanced tayo, bakit hindi? Para sa akin, we have our own opinion sa part na yan. As, an, as a technology enthusiast, I will. <laughs> so, yan. Ayaw nila, ayaw nila. Well, I respect your decisions, by the way. Siguro pag nandito na kayo sa age ko, Uh, you will eventually realize what I mean sa part na to. Ganyan din ako dati. Ayoko, ayoko na microchip ka ako. Pero, nare-realize ko yung effect. And, yeah. Nare-realize ko yung effect niya. <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077. I just wanna be a VTuber. <laughs> okay, I-, I think we can end our discussion here dito sa part na to. Sa, sa hype cycle of emerging technologies.